everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and today we're just making some fun little master boards to use up in our junk journals, just some other ideas adding to um, our portfolio of things we can pull from or draw from as we make our junk journals through the year. And if you haven't tried playing with watercolor, I, I certainly encourage you to do so. And don't worry about the fact if you're not an artist or not, you don't have to be. These are really simple techniques anybody can do. And I'm going to show you some options today uh, from using some fun stuff you just might have around the house. So, for example, they, these are coffee um, splotches. And I think they came out really cool on the watercolor paper. And if you want to see what kind of watercolor paper this is, it's just a watercolor book I bought at Hobby Lobby. This is the book. There's the measurements. Okay, so, but you can get these in book form or loose or whatever. Um... But, uh, okay, so here's the ticket. Um, the round drops, these were dropped at a very low distance, short distance from the paper. Um, I think I dropped them from a Q-tip, if I recall. Uh, and the, these, all I did was hold the Q-tip up much higher. You can also do this with a paintbrush um, and just make the drop much higher and you'll get more of a splash effect. Now, you can use this for a background paper. Um, you can cut this piece up and use it for pockets and tucks and belly bands and all sorts of fun things in your junk journal. Um, or you can turn it into art and then into a master board um, that you will then maybe keep whole or cut up at your will, always at your will. And today, um, I brought some of these along. Maybe, um, maybe not everybody has. Okay, so if you don't, if you do have a brush or you don't know what brush to get, a good place to start is a round brush. It has a big belly and a small tip, so it gives you a lot of um, options with one, one brush. You can do fine detail work, plus also big blob work. That's a technical term. And um, but then you might have remember these old guys coming from a like this is what you know I grew up with. These were makeup sponges. Um, they used to come in a pack, and we can see how we can use these as well. And then today, makeup sponges come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and colors. Um, so there you go. Today I'm using J Jane Davenport. Um, this, you don't have to use expensive, inexpensive, middle of the road watercolor for this. It can be anything. It can be the El Cheapo stuff that's seven or eight bucks at the at Hobby Lobby. It gives you a whole, not this one, but the um, the other ones will give you like a whole palette of multiple colors. You can have fun with the cheap stuff. Just just saying. All right, I do. I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see what's going on in my clean desk. Um, I have a glass of water. Um, and you want to use glasses that you don't drink out of because you don't want to be compelled to accidentally drink your t paint water. That's not a good thing. And if you're going to use coffee, make sure that once you're done painting with your coffee, you get rid of that cup because sometimes we go back and, you know, we're not thinking and gulp. Okay, so, um, the, I, you know, I thought, well, what can I do with these? Um, let's, let's maybe wet our paint a little bit. I thought maybe these kind of look like those flowers, you know, we did our own drip design the other day where we made this, but this time we're using coffee and we're getting more, um, <clears throat> see these flowers, the paper was wet and the flowers dispersed, the, the, the paint dispersed a little bit more. Here, the paper was dry and that's what the splashes look like. So just kind of that idea okay so um i'm thinking okay well what if we consider these flowers again that's kind of a cool idea i wonder if i can take either a white pencil or a white gel pen i wonder if i can make like white maybe i'll do like a neutral theme on that that might be cool um let's see if okay so this is an aquarellable stabilo water soluble pencil 8052 let's see if it actually writes on the coffee. Here we go. Oh, I can see a dot. Okay, that's not bad. I'm just going to put some central dots here. Okay, so let me just do a few, and then I'm going to do the gel pen. You can see the difference. So that's not bad. There's nothing about that. You could add water to that, and that will splay out and, and do it for some changes, because this is water dissolvable pencil. Um, I hope this works. This is a... Uh, uh, there's a name for it. There it is. Uniball Signo. There's the number. 
Okay, um, 153, I think. Okay, let's see if this writes, because I haven't used it in forever. Oh, it's kind of a little dry and goopy there. Well, we'll just see. Okay, here we get this paper. All right, here we go. You know, how do you know if the white white ink is writing? You know, you put it on something dark. Let's just go in and try. Oh, yep, yeah, it's there. So I would say this is a little bit more noticeable. And this is an artist's, and you don't have to be an artist, but this is an artist's best friend when it comes to adding little white accents to things. And when you're doing all these, you don't have to put the little uh, like stamen thing right in the dead center because sometimes this this little thing might be rotated a little bit in space and in the air as this little dust flower is flying through the universe. Okay. All right, there we go. <clears throat> now, um, I was going to, let's see, I don't know if I'm going to do this now. Let's see. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to wet it. Actually, let me do this. Let me pretend I don't have a round brush. Hi, I'm Pam and I don't have a round brush. So I'm going to get some water. I'm going to take this little, well, actually, let me use this end. That's a little, there's a sharp end on there. I'm going to wet the end of the sponge. This is like a plasticky sort of sponge. So let's see if it actually picks up color. And then, oh, let me back up a little bit. And um, let's get, let's wet our palette. You can do this. This is allowed. You can spray your palette. That will start to activate your um, uh, paints. And then you can make a little, maybe you want to add a little extra water over here. Get this going. I guess it is absorbing the paint. Okay, or the water, so because the water is disappearing, so that's a sign, right? Um, okay, dabbing, dabbing, loading, loading, going for density here. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is make stems. I don't know if I can use the edge of this. I'm going to try. Here we go. Try this side. Okay, that kind of worked. Oh, look at that. We are getting a skinny. Can you see that? Yeah. So just, you know, you can use other things around the house if you don't happen to have a paintbrush. So this is a Q-tip and a makeup sponge for options. Uh, while you're, you know, you're probably waiting for your brush to come on Amazon. Or maybe you're waddling over to, I know you would never waddle. No, it's only me who waddles. I am a serious waddler when I'm going over to the craft store. Time to waddle into Hobby Lobby and blow some bucks <laughs> right um, but if you can find alternatives at home why not um, so this is going to give you a little bit different of a look than using a paintbrush or it's almost giving like a bamboo-ish sort of um, segmented look and they can cross each other that's kind of more natural in the way things do in life they cross each other okay and uh, yeah, just kind of getting in touch again with a little bit of drawing and painting this year. I, I kind of got away from it and I, I, I found my old paint books. That's what happened. And um, I was missing the joy of it. So I thought, well, you know what? I, I do enjoy doing that. So why not incorporate it into uh, my junk journal world? Um, and um, it's fun when you can add different skills to your uh, junk journal world. I mean, it's almost natural place for all these other you know things that you try to come and play so if you're a sewer or you're um, a painter or you like to knit I mean whatever your your jam is whatever you like to do bring it forth and have some fun with it and um, now I'm wondering if I can do a little bit more pedally all right but just adding a few more details here. Right. Okay, some straight ones at the top, and then maybe some roundy ones at the bottom. Just for fun. I don't know if you can see me doing that, but I'm I'm, I'm trying. And I'm trying to denote the curvature of the petals here a little bit. Okay, almost like a little 
I don't know, like a little pant. I don't know, be a, be a pansy or whatever it is. It's a, it's a cute little flower. This would be very nice in a in a neutral journal. So you can make. You don't have to have a lot of stuff. You just have to have a little ingenuity and see things with a different eye. I guess that's what I'm saying. Is uh, there's pigment all around you, and there's always stuff to play with. I mean. You know, even your fingernail can be a tool. Okay, let's go deep and see if we can actually make something with a fingernail. Okay. We're going in purple. That, that changes everything, Pam, if you're going to put purple in there. <coughs> That's okay. I just want you to be able to see it. Okay, let's see if we actually get some. Maybe we'll go in the purple here. Or if you get a dirty fingernail. Okay, let's just see what it does. Oh, okay. So... Look at me, making a flower with my fingernail. And there's actually, it holds quite a bit of, I didn't think it was going to hold that much ink. I have surprised myself here. So with these unusual little droplets, they deserve their own special petals in my book. Literally in my book. Um, okay, so let me see. More, more ink. Okay, Lo reloading. It's like a fountain pen. I have a fountain pen finger. Who knew? If you don't have a fingernail, I hear you. I don't have fingernails. Use something else. <laughs> Use um, maybe the bottom of a paper clip. Um, okay, I will try that so you can see. I don't know, I'm just trying to think what an alternative to this type of thickness might actually be. Okay, let me, now, this would be an opportune moment for a little tissue or a baby wipe, right? So, and apparently this stuff just wipes off the nails. I don't know why. All right. Let me, let me hold my feet to the fire. I'm going to now grab a little baby paper clip. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. Wetting. Okay. I don't know if I'll get this wide. we we'll see. Not bad. Eh? Eh? Okay. So those of you without fingernails, I will hear none of that. Um, this actually works pretty good. Water. Paint. Okay. Alright, so we're going to get a little flower that has a little bit small. These are actually, I think, better than the fingernail. That was kind of neat. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, so I do, I like that very much. Yes, we're good. Okay, put my, my painting tool down. Um, do I want leaves? Maybe. Okay, so I'm just, just having fun here, and I'm thinking, like, the more I put on here, the better when I cut it up. It looks kind of cool. White space is always good, too, um, but you can definitely uh, add more leaves it, You can, in the same color family. Okay. All right, let's get some leafy. Okay, I don't I have no idea what a leaf is going to look like here. Let's see. Okay. Um... Oh, that looks kind of good, actually. So I'm using this corner tip. Just the corner tip. And we get some more paint. Huh. Those are actually not bad for little leafy-like things. Okay. I think we will call this a leaf success. Okay. Okay. Oh, here. Yep, that's good. So maybe the wind is all blowing this way. That's why they're all going in the same direction. Oops. Now, if push harder, you get a fatter leaf. Just saying. Maybe you want fatter leaves. Maybe we should do some fatter leaf examples. Let's see if that was just, that was just an accident. Let's see if I can repeat it. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's one down and push. Let's try that again. Just down and push. Down and push. Boy, you can't get any easier than that. So if you want to just do random leaf shapes, maybe daubing isn't even necessary. Maybe we'll put some on the other side. These sideways. Pew. Pew. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, leaf, oh, down push and drag a little bit. Down push and drag a little bit. Down push and drag a little bit. Get in different shapes, depending on which end you get on your, do you get it flat, do you get the pinpoint end? Get the pinpoint end. Down drag. Down drag. Anyway, lots of fun with that. Um, so don't worry about being an artist. Don't worry about being neat. Uh, just kind of feel your way through this. Um, I feel like, what, what was I, what did I, oh, I used the, now what if I use the tip of a paper clip? So I really, I just want a little, I just want a little, oh, yeah, I just get, oh, look at that, little, Pinpoint dots. Oh, is that a cutie cute cute? Can you see her too far away? Well, that's a little close and personal. Okay, how about there? That's good. Um, so if you want to just do a little bit of dotting, don't, don't, no, I got it, got it. It has to be wet, pen. Okay, because remember, it's only a tip of a paper clip. I mean, how much can we ask of this? Because we're scrapping in our house, we're looking around in our homes to see what we can use if we don't have all this stuff. Never let lack of a craft supply stop you, right? Yeah, we're always gonna look for alternatives. Because we get excited about an idea, we wanna do something about it right now. Am I in the picture? Yeah. So I want you to grab onto that movement, that energy, and when you're excited, and just grab some paper. It all starts with grabbing some paper. And um, just tell everybody you need five minutes in the craft room and you'll be so much happier. It will be worth it to all of them to keep you happy. Um, it'll make a difference <laughs> in their day. Um, okay, that's kind of cool. Now you could totally um, do splattering effect and stuff like that. Um, which I think is always like a nice thing. Um, but you can do other things to fill in white space if you want to fill in white space. We're not going to fill in white space with a white marker, that's for sure. But um, let's see what else we have here. Okay, well here's like a weird one. Uh, probably nobody has that. Uh, we've got probably a lot of people might have these hanging around the house. Let's see. Okay, see, whenever you have these little point ends, they're little point things you can do things with. So, well, let's let's stick it in some... So let's stick it in some color and see what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna wet this end. Okay. Have to go in maybe the purple. I had that. I don't know what that's gonna do. Let's just see. Um, I'm gonna maybe accentuate some of the sides of the stems in this strange hueish purple color. Maybe this plant is somehow related to Heather. No, probably not, but in my mind it might be. Um, and almost make it like a dark shadow. Not on everyone and not everywhere. Maybe just some places here and there for a little little accent of something. Um, you know, you work with what you have and it's only paper. Remember, if you mess it up, it's okay. You can always grab another piece, but just play with it for a while, especially if you mess it up because you got nothing to lose at that point. Nothing to tell you, nothing. Um, Okay, so maybe these two flowers, they need some distinction between them. Okay, there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Anybody else is crowding together? We have a crowd here. All right. Don't know what that was, just sort of went for it. Um, but you never know until you try these things. Oh, yeah, okay, very nice, very nice. Bringing a little more color. So apparently we've gone from coffee color to coffee color and green, and now we have pulled in a little bit of purple. Three colors are always a solid place to start from if you like to play with color. You can totally do this all neutral. Apparently I left that, that train has left the building. Um, but that's okay, and it's okay to do primarily neutral with a little splash of color every once in a while. Um, okay, so let's maybe... This one is actually pretty dry already. Hold on a sec. Okay, I don't know why I'm pulling this out, but I am. I'm grabbing the stickles in Stardust, if I can get it to work. It's basically glitter glue, 
And I'm going to try and goof around with it. I'm going to squirt it in my hand. So it will come out to play. Hang on. Trying to get it down there. I probably use this one a lot. I hear something. I don't know if it's uh, empty or clogged. You know what we have to do? We have to get the old needle, the pin. Uh, well, that was kind of short one. Could I? Could I? Could I have put a shorter needle pin in the entire needle basket? All right, let's see if we can get this to flow a little more. This one might be coming to its bitter end. Feels kind of empty. Oops, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> I think it's empty. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in there. All right, we're just gonna grab another color. All right, back over to the stickle drawer. What's this? Crystal. Okay, this has a little bit more green shimmer in it. And this one feels fuller. Let's see how this one goes. Okay, now we impress ourselves here with a little dollop. Okay, you're stuck too. Okay, it's just one of those days. I'm getting stuck with the stickles. My stickles are old, so sometimes they clog. But you can use a little needle or pin, and that will give you some stickles. So I thought maybe what I do, might do is... Um, Maybe make, oh, here, let me actually do this. Sorry, excuse me, excuse me, sorry. There we go, better, better focus. Um, I was gonna use my finger. Since like we're, we're apparently playing with no, we don't have any tools. We just, we're just sitting there by ourselves with a bottle of stickles and nothing else. So I'm just gonna make these glittery flowers. That's easy enough, anybody can do that. Okay. And you can just keep going with this stuff. Okay, the flowers are all stickly and, and see by this smush pat technique this is the official smush pat technique with stickly um, it doesn't take as long to dry so there's a little side benefit to that all right come on now baby I know you got a clog and you just want me to get back in there and clear it okay you yeah, can feel it okay let's see how we did okay hang on and with the great brute strength. Okay. Usually come right out. There's a, like a little clog, I think. Yep, there's a clog. This is evidentia of a clog. No, oh, I think I got something out there. Go back in there and clear it up a little bit. Okay, let's see if we're smooth flowing now. I have now managed to stickle myself and not much else. Okay. A little before the clog came back down. All right, well, I think I have enough. Let's put the lid on here. Okay, let's keep stickling. All right, get the stickles on there before it dries, Pam. See, now I'm I'm worried the stickles will dry too quickly. <laughs> That's funny. It's usually the other way around. Um, okay, so we have everybody all pretty. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, if you just want to do random, you know. I, there, I can't get anything off here now. It's just a little bit of color in the air. But I do feel like I want a little more background color. For some reason, I stopped over here. I don't know why. Um, so when this happens, we have to come to terms with finding some weird little supply that maybe everyone will have. Let's see. Well, we could do the Q-tip again. Okay, let's grab the Q-tip. And... Um, Random Q-tip of life. Okay, here's standard Q-tip shape, size, color. Okay, there we go. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go for broke here. I'm going to put this, I'm going to, this is my water cup. This is my very wet Q-tip. Let me back up so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to play in the purple. Okay, yep, that's what I'm going to do. It has to be very wet. We're going to try for the, oh, we can get splatters with this. That's good. Okay. They actually come out pretty good. So it'll be a lighter, remember this is going to dry lighter than it is wet. So just remember that. It's darkest when it's wet. Okay, there's lots on there. More water, more water. Okay, so this is kind of fun. Okay. I'm, I'm so glad I have my <clears throat> craft mat protector like a good crafter is protecting her mat and watercolor comes right off of uh, 
stuff anyway, so because it's water soluble, so it's okay even if you did get it on some stuff, it'll you know hopefully come off. Okay, so getting lots of color going here. Um, this is the crazy pollen from these beautiful flowers in the air, going every which way, known to Sunday. Okay, there, now we have that. Okay, wipe, 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 little stickles, little purple, it's all good. Okay, so we're just going to like push this envelope. How far can we take this? So now I have this saturated purple thing. What if I just did blotches? Okay, just like random blot. Nobody knows what this is. This is just like, this could be anything. You have like weird things like airfish. These are airfish. They look like little airfish or birds or something to me. Um, coming through, just giving another layer of something to this paper. Just giving it a little bit more. And if you say, oh, no, that's too intense, Pam, you went too far, you can take your, your wipey and you can blot some of the color back. Yeah, you can actually take back what you did. Yeah, so it's not as intense and it's more uniform with the color palette, level, depthness, intensity. There we go. I think I covered everything there. Um, oh, that's really pretty, actually. Now, all of a sudden, I'm really starting to like this. Okay. Oh, was, there. Okay, so now we've filled in a lot of the white space. <clears throat> I really like that. I don't know why. I don't know what it's going to be, but I, I think we're, we're onto something good here. Sunny, do you want to give your two cents on this? I would love nothing more than to give my two cents on that beautiful creation, Mother. Here I come. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. This is Sunshine, canine reporter, giving my two cents. Huh? That. <laughs> Where do I put the two cents, Mom? Um, uh, back in the coffers, because we're going to need it to buy kibble. Okay, I might put three cents in then. Go for the fancy stuff, Mom. Don't chintz. Not on sunshine. Do I ever chintz on you? No, but I'm watching you. I want you to know I'm watching you. <laughs> oh, really? Have you been hanging around your friends and they all tell you you got to buy the fancy stuff? Maybe. Okay, well, it's not all about the fancy stuff in life, son. Sometimes you can have fun with a Q-tip. Yeah, apparently so. Look at that. Whoa. Okay. Well, I can't really top that, so uh, sunshine out. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, there you go, folks. Another crazy day at the paper outpost. Um, I hope you're having fun out there. Whatever you have, whatever supplies you have, just try and look at them with a new, a fresh eye and see where you can take them because... Uh, Never let lack of, lack of a craft supply stop you. Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. New audio material. I'm in year six of the podcast. Can you believe that? And there's over a thousand episodes. I can't believe that. That just blows my mind. Uh, um, my uh, You can watch video podcasts on Spotify anytime you like. And um, um, I know that's weird. It's like, why would anybody listen to a podcast? on junk journals. It seems like a very visual thing, but you know, it's, it's, it's paper crafting, life of a crafter, junk journaling, and answering your crafty questions. So, uh, I do a mix of those topics and, um, there always seems to be something more to chit chat about when it comes to junk journaling. And sometimes you're driving or you're doing the laundry or your hands are occupied or you're not in front of a screen. I know rare these days, but sometimes you're not in front of a screen. Um, and you just want to have some fun. So I hope this answers that for you. And uh, I have an Etsy shop where I sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers, such as antique ledger, checks, receipts, posts, cards, uh, black and white photos, tea cards, music paper, dictionary pages, and a whole plethora of very interesting book pages, plus um, a lot of other things in there, 100 plus pieces, and free priority mail shipping is included. Um, I also sell digi kits, which are printable, downloadable images that you can purchase. And um, here's an example. Um, you get a bunch of images and there's five pages of images in each kit. They're themed. So if you like flowers or butterflies or dragonflies or Victorian styles, there's all sorts of different ones to pick from. Um, and you can print them out at home. Now, if you don't like to print or don't have a printer, just let me know and I will print them out for you. Um, there is, uh, I have a print and mail option. Just buy that. That's all you buy. And then send me your list of the digi kits 
names that you want that are from my shop. Um, if you go to www.thepaperoutpost.com, um, you will only see my digikits. And uh, just send me the names. I only need the first two or three words. You can send the list to uh, through Etsy message or Etsy contact, or you can send it um, via email to pam at thepaperoutpost.com. Okay, so um, ba -ba -da -ba. you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Facebook group. And remember, most of all, that fun can be simple. So create with reckless abandon, everybody. Go have some fun. Take care. Bye.